Hi, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how you can make your own alarm clock animation. We'll be doing some modeling, using some modifiers, adding a small wiggle animation, adding some lighting and finishing it off with some materials. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and if you have any obstacles or challenges in Blender, let me know in the comment section. I'm excited, so let's dive right in. Press Shift A, Mesh and add a cylinder. Then press 1 on your numpad or your tilde key to go into your view menu and open the front view. Then we'll rotate it on RX90. Press Tab to go into edit mode and then press S and Y and scale it down on the Y axis. Press 3 to go into face select, select the front face, press I to inset. And then E and extrude it in. Press tab to leave edit mode, go into your modifiers tab, and then we'll add a bevel modifier. We can change the amount to 0 0.15, 015, and then segments to 4. Right click, shade auto smooth, and then press control 2, and we'll add a subdivision modifier as well. Now we'll go back into front view, and then we'll press shift A, mesh, and add another cylinder. Press G and X to move it to the side a bit, tap to go into edit mode, and then I'll scale it down. And then I'll select the bottom face, scale that one down. Press 2 to go into edge select, and then press Ctrl B, and then add a bevel, and then with your mouse wheel increase the amount of bevel lines. Just like that, and then press Ctrl R, add a loop cut, and move that up, and then we can press Ctrl 2 when we've left edit mode. Then we'll add inset the top face like that. And then we can go into front view, tap to go into edit mode, A to select all, and press G and Z. And we'll make sure that our origin point is at the top like that. Then it's right there. Then tap to leave edit mode, and then press G. And then we'll move it into position and R to rotate it. There, maybe I'm going to scale it down just a tiny bit. Okay, there we go. That's one foot. We'll uh, go to modifiers and then we'll add a mirror. And then for mirror object, we'll select the cylinder. And there we go. Okay, then we'll go back into front view. Press Shift A, Mesh, and add a UV sphere. Press G and Z to move it up. Tap to go into edit mode, press 1 to go into vert select, Z and then toggle x-ray, and then delete the bottom half, press X and V to delete it, and press A to select all, S and Z, and I'm scaling it down a tiny bit on the Z axis. Then I press shift A, mesh, and I'll add another cylinder, tap to go into edit mode, and then I'll scale it down, and then S and Z to scale it up in the z-axis and there just like that and then in edit mode in face select select the top face press e to extrude and right click to confirm s to scale up and then e to extrude it up you can also toggle x-ray off again press 2 to go into edge select and then Control b and we'll bevel it like that and then g and z and i'll move that down a tiny bit and then hold Alt and select this loop and then press Ctrl B there and give that a nice bevel as well. And then we can add with Ctrl R a loop cut and we'll move it up somewhere there. And another loop cut and move that all the way down. And then now we can leave edit mode, press Ctrl 2 to add a subdivision modifier, right click shade out as move. We'll click on this bell and we'll add a solidify. And then we'll decrease the tick increase the thickness and then press ctrl 2 to add a subdivision there as well and then increase the subdivisions to 3 right click shade out as move okay that looks great i'll go back into front view i'll move this one up a tiny bit and then i'll select both tap to go into edit mode i'll scale them down a tiny bit and then i'll move them in position and see how it looks um, it's a bit too big, so I'll scale it down some more. And there. Oh, yeah, I like how that looks. 
Maybe I'm going to scale this one down on the set and the y-axis a tiny bit more. There, okay. And then we can click here and I will add a mirror. There it is. And then the mirror object is once again our cylinder. And we'll do the same for this one. Add a mirror. And it's also the same mirror object. Okay, now we'll, um, we'll click on this bell. Go tab into edit mode and then select these top faces here. Let's see, I'll select those and then press Shift S and then cursor to select it. So our 3D cursor is right there in the middle. And then in front view, we'll press Shift A and we'll add a plane. And then we can press R to rotate that. And then tab and edit mode and we'll scale it down and then maybe move it up a tiny bit and then s and y scale it down on the y-axis a tiny bit and then i'll select these two verge i'll go into edit mode and i would control right click i'm going to extrude them to something like that and i'll stop here at the blue line and then we'll leave edit mode and I'll go and add a mirror modifier with the same mirror object once again. I'll activate clipping and then we can make them clip like that. And then toggle x-ray and now I'm going to adjust the shape just a tiny bit so it's a bit smoother. There, that looks good. Then we can go here and we'll apply our mirror and then go into edit mode, press A to select all, and then Alt E and F to extrude the faces. And then leave edit mode, press Ctrl 2 to add a subdivision modifier. I'll increase it to three. And then in edit mode, press A to select all. I'm going to scale it down just a tiny bit in the Y axis. And then with Ctrl R, I'll add a loop cut on each end. There we go. Then you have the little hammer in the middle so we'll select our cylinder press shift s cursor to selector so it's in the middle again you could also press shift c press shift a mash and add a cylinder and we'll scale that down move it up and we'll scale it down some more there and then we can just add a little bevel modifier to that let's see how 0 0.015 right click shade auto smooth and then i'll press shift a and i'll add a cube move that up scale it down and we can scale it up a bit in the x-axis and then i shift click on this object and then i'll press ctrl l and then p to copy the modifiers and i'll shade it smooth and then i'll place that right there okay and then we'll continue with the clock so shift a and mesh and we'll add a uv sphere i'll scale that down with g and y and then it's nice in the middle i think that looks good i'll uh, press ctrl 2 to add a subdivision and shade it smooth and there just like that maybe move it out a tiny bit more yes and then in front view Press Shift A, Mesh, and add a plane. Press R, X, and 90 to rotate it. And then I'll press Z to toggle X-ray, and in edit mode, I'll scale this down. And then I'll select these two verts. Press G and X, and then move it out. Maybe I'll scale it down just a tip, tiny bit more. Select these two verts. Press Control B to bevel. Press V to bevel the corners. And then there we go. And press A to select all, E, and extrude it. And then we can toggle X-ray again, press G and Y, and then we'll move it forward. There we go. And then we'll add a nice bevel modifier with four segments, and then the amount could maybe be 0.02 or something. Right click, shade out of smooth, and then press Ctrl to add a subdivision modifier. Okay, then press period, and change your pivot point to 3D cursor. And we can press Shift D, R, Y, and then we can basically rotate 
that one there and then R then I'll tap into edit mode toggle x-ray I'm going to make this one a tiny bit smaller like that and then press R Y and we'll place that somewhere there okay then press shift a mesh and add a cube and then we'll tab into edit mode scale that down scale it up in the set axis g and set move it up and then we can move it forward on the y axis and then i'll press add modifier and then i'll add a bevel modifier with four segments and then maybe 0 0.015 right click shade smooth and then control 2 to add a subdivision modifier and g and y and i'll move it in to the clock a tiny bit more i think it could be a tiny bit bigger there we go okay now we press alt d to make a link to duplicate and then we'll press r y 90 to rotate it as well and then press shift r twice to redo your last action okay and then there's our model okay so then we'll go into front view we'll press shift a and we'll add a camera and press g y 5 minus to move it back press zero on your numpad to go into camera view or go through your view menu and then we'll change the resolution to 1920 by 1920 we're still a bit too zoomed in so i'll press g and then set twice and i'll move it back just a tiny bit like that then i'll press shift a mesh and i'll add a plane press period to go back to median point press rx 90 and then we'll press g and y and we'll move that to the back and then in edit mode we'll scale it up so it covers our background leave edit mode then we'll press shift a and we'll add an empty i'll add a cube I'm going to increase the size of the cube a tiny bit so now we select everything from our clock and then select the empty last and then press Control p and set parent to object keep transform so now basically we have everything parented to our empty so now when we move the empty we move the whole clock this will help us with our animation so with the empty selection selected press r twice and then we can give it a slight rotation maybe something like that and i'll move it a bit more to the middle as well okay now before we do our lights and our materials we'll do the animation so select the empty and then press i and add a location we'll go here to our scene settings and um, change the file format to ffmpeg video and coding to mp4 um, frame range will do um, 120 24 fps that will be five uh, second video that's good enough okay so now with your empty selected click on the icon here and it will change into a graph editor and then you'll see your x y and z location here that's the keyframe we had and now we'll click on the x location and now if you press n here a um, side menu will pop up so open that menu click on modifiers and it will add a modifier and it's going to be a noise modifier and then in the noise modifier if we now press play we'll see that it starts shaking now if you like this uh, animation you can leave it like this i kind of wanted to wiggle it a tiny bit more so i'm going to uh, change the strength a tiny bit i'm going to decrease it to 0.35 and then i will go and go to the y location but before that if you click this icon here you can copy your modifiers then i'll go to y and then click this icon here and you can paste it and then i'm only going to change the phase to five and i'll do the same for z but then i'll change the phase to 10. so now we've got like this whole wiggling clock gone crazy animation i think it's kind of nice so that was that and then we'll go to press z and we'll go into rendered view and we'll start adding some lighting we press shift a light and add an area light and then we'll press r x 90 minus to rotate it and then g and y maybe four to move it behind our clock 
go into camera view go into your light settings increase the size so it covers the whole background and then we can change the power to be um let's start with 400 and then we'll see how that looks later press shift a light and then another area light press g and z move it up press period and change your pivot point to 3d cursor and then we'll press rx 45 and then rz 45 minus i think that is a pretty good angle we'll change the shape to disc and then this size to two and we'll change the power to 150. might be a bit too strong maybe we'll change it to 100 or well, let's let's keep it at 150 for now okay so with your area light selected press shift d rz 120 and then press r and x twice so you can rotate it on the x and i'm just going to shine it from the side and then press g and z twice and then we can move it back just a tiny bit there we go we'll add a light to our background so add another area light press r x 90 to rotate it g and y we'll move that back and then we'll change the size to free shape to disc and then the power to 800 we'll see like that okay now we'll start adding some materials we'll start with the background so select the background go to your material tab and then we'll name that background and then we're going to change the color to ffd 78 d and then we'll select this piece that's going to be metal and a new material we'll call it metal and then we'll change our base color to hd b9 e7 and then put metallic to one and then our clock I'll select new. I'm going to make my clock yellow. We'll change the base color to E7923C. And we'll change the roughness to 0.2. And then I want this part to be yellow as well. So I select it. Then I'll select the yellow material one. And then Control L and M to link materials. I'll do the same for everything that's going to be metal, which is that one that one that one and that one and then select the one that has the metal material lost Control l and m to link it and i missed that one i see now there and then we'll select our clock again go into edit mode select this back back face press plus to add another material slot add a new material and then click assign and then we can just maybe make it a tiny bit lighter and then we'll change our roughness to 0.35 okay and then all of these are going to be black so we'll add a new material call that black and then we'll change our color to 424242 and then maybe decrease the roughness to 0.4 i'll select these pointers and then the black one and then control l and m and i think i'm going to make this one red i think that could look cool so i'll change my base color to df472a and then decrease the roughness to 0.35 as well there we go now i'll go and change my render engine to cycles my gpu device to gpu compute and then maybe we can just go a bit closer with our camera view we select our camera we can just move it a tiny bit closer there we go and then we'll go into our world tab and we'll change our world color to a0612c i'm also going to go into the scene settings and change the color management and set it to a medium high contrast and then there we go all that's left to do now is render thanks for joining me i hope you had a good time creating your own animation want to learn more be sure to check out the other tutorials on my channel if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and if you have any other obstacles or challenges in blender let me know in the comment section 
Don't forget to tag me when you upload your masterpiece to Instagram. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. See you soon.